want everybody to know I am the person. Scene number three, witchcraft and extra biblical practices. Right for reference, we may not read it for time. Acts chapter 8 from verse 9 down to 23. You want to enjoy the reading? Read from Amplified. There was a sorcerer called Simeon. When, when Philip went down to Samaria, the Bible says, and he preached Christ to them. And the Bible says, they with one accord gave heed, seeing and hearing the miracles which he did. And there was somebody called Simon. He was a sorcerer. The Bible says he, he made a lot of money. In fact, the people captioned him the great power of God. That was a title they gave him because of the level of his spiritual exploits. His ministry ended when the apostles now started coming there. And the Bible says he was convicted genuinely. He went for Philip's crusade. And when Philip preached, listen carefully, the guy was converted. He was even baptized. So when they sent um, James and John now, and they went there, and he saw that through the laying on of hands, he saw another dimension that was not captured in his practice. That they just laid hands and people were getting filled. Do you know what he did? He cornered James and John later, or was it Peter and, and, and John now, and told them, he said, please, I have money. I can give you money. Let me add to this. You see that he was saved, but not transformed. There are many people who are born again, but when the going gets tough, they still attend to all kinds of things. There are believers that still do masquerades. <laughs> I'm not saying attend the festival. They are the, 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 that, they, they bought the regalia. They have it. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Amen. Yours is the kingdom. Yours. Is the power yours? Is the glory forever? Yeshua. Ah, ah, ah. What is the solution to witchcraft and extra biblical practices two scriptures very quickly second corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 perhaps you are a man of god listening to me perhaps you are a young minister who is beginning to start and your passion you are driving you you want to do this ministry by fire by force let me give you a strong word of advice therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. Verse 2. It says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Give us Hebrews 12 and verse 28. So you must renounce the hidden works of dishonesty. The Bible says, wherefore, Hebrews 12, 28, receiving, seeing that, receiving a kingdom, wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, it says, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. What then is the cure to witchcraft and extra biblical practices? Fear God fear god fear god when you fear god sincerely you will love his people too much to deceive and manipulate them when you fear god you will love his people too much are we together to send them all kinds of text messages with lying prophecies i saw this about you make sure you are in church tomorrow no don't do that again remember do not forget that all we teach is from a standpoint of love and not self-righteousness no we are all but products of god's mercy but the truth must be spoken even if it is in love are we together witchcraft 
sin number four that the church needs to be are you tired that the church needs to be purged off write it down please pride vain glory and self-centeredness this is the fourth cancer that god wants to take out of the church for her to be a purified church sin vain glory and self-centeredness james chapter 4 and verse 6 immediately tells us james 4 verse 6 that god giveth more grace wherefore he saith god resisted the proud please shout it god resisted the proud one more time please it is important for you to know who is going to fight you when you are proud if it is a demon that fights you the anointing can help you but when the owner of the anointing is the one fighting you will you bring an anointing to fight him god resisted the proud but he gives grace to the humble luke chapter 18 please from verse 9 to 14 luke 18 starts with the teaching on prayer most times we just read the prayer part and we stop but here's what the bible says he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves are you seeing now he's talking about those who trust in themselves that they were righteous and despised others 10. two men went up into the temple to pray jesus is speaking now one was a pharisee and one was a publican an ordinary person the pharisee stood up and hear what he prayed the bible says he prayed thus with himself god i thank thee this is his praying now that i am not as the other men are does that sound like how we behave in the church believers we stand with self-righteousness full of ourselves i thank you because i am not as other men are extortioners unjust adulterers and even this publican who is standing by my side verse 12 he's praying you know somebody else came to pray i fast twice in a week he's reading his credentials before god now i give tithes of all that i possess 13. and the publican what is his business with the publican that is the character of pride it never focuses on its own thing it will have to use a basis to contrast and the publican standing afar off look at what he said would not even lift up so much his eyes unto the heavens but smote his breast saying god be merciful unto me a sinner next verse 14 i tell you jesus is speaking now jesus assessed two people who went to pray this man went down to his house justified the publican rather than the other for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased brought low and he that humbled himself shall be exalted i submit to you sincerely that the body of christ in as much as we have commended a lot of things we must trust god for grace to manage pride among we men of god among members among politicians among successful people pride vain glory and self-centeredness romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 6 god is speaking to us tonight I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God he says to present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 he says do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God now pay attention verse 3 for I say through the grace given me to every man that is among you watch this now it's a warning not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as god has dealt to every man the measure of faith verse 4 for as ye have many members in the body and he said all members have not the same office that means if you are proud it is because you do not recognize that there are diversities within the body so we being many are one body in christ and everyone members of another verse six the last verse now it says having then gifts differing 
according to the grace that is given to us whether it is prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith and then it continues like that but he's saying you have to be careful do not exalt yourself in your own eyes more highly listen i learned this about men it is about you but not all about you it's a revelation we must have as leaders as believers when everything becomes about you and it's a mistake we make as men of god we clamor to be the focus and the epicenter of everything self-centeredness is someone learning the scene of pride the scene of vain glory do you know way before the scene of sexual immorality way before the scene of other perversions way before the scene of witchcraft that one scene was the scene of pride and treason satan i will exalt myself above the stars of god so it is an old scene i will be like the most high self-centeredness you must get to a point where you appreciate the fact that you are only one of many as a businessman as a man of god i am only one of many across the body of christ globally in africa and in this nation who have obtained mercy by god to make a very meaningful contribution towards kingdom come when i suggest to myself that it is all about me there is trouble is someone learning especially for young ministers who god is helping to come up or younger ministers i would say because we're all young younger ministers who are coming up we have to be careful pride the pulpit should not be a place of pride there's there's too much pride and vain glory and it is because of that that it leads us into all kinds of lies are we together oh i held a meeting and 100,000 people came to my church and out of them 10,000 people got up on wheelchairs Abba. it's all about you jesus and all this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender let me tell you the truth I submit to you my dear people the person talking to you has seen the mercy and the glory of God I'm not speaking in ignorance I have stood before kings I have stood before nobles God has honored me with what many people will not get in many lifetimes. I submit to you. So if there is something to boast about, the person standing before you can beat his chest and we can speak. God has elevated us and honored us and given us visibility across the globe. If there is anything to make noise about, we can beat our chest. We have stood before kings. God has brought kings and heads of governments and leaders to become sons and mentees. But we count everything like Paul, but dung for the excellency of Christ. So by the privilege of God's grace and by the privilege of results, I have a right to say what I'm saying. When we speak like this, we do not speak. It is not to downplay or demean what God has made. If we begin to read the credentials of our accomplishments and the things that God is doing in and through us across the nations. And many of you here, Koinonia here is, is a collection of extremely successful people. There are billionaires in this place. There are multi-millionaires. There are successful people, politicians, business people, heads of conglomerates. Some of them do not, they are not even in this main auditorium. They are somewhere scattered in the overflow. Our global family is full of extremely successful people. Some of them, I do not even know them myself. The days I meet them or communicate with them, I am surprised that this is what God has given. It is easy for me to stand and beat my chest. And if anyone talks, I say, see my result. Bring your own first before you talk. 
but we count this bus dung. God has lifted us to be able to, by the privilege of God's grace, use our life to help mentor nations. That when God lifts you, your assignment is to be as an usher to lift him. And forever, for as long as we live, it will always be Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Acknowledge the truth and what God is doing in your life, but be careful. Pride and vainglory. When it becomes all about Joshua Selman, there is trouble. Are we together? Because that means all the people who I teach and mentor and raise will have to follow that template. And it's going to be a, a, the extended consequence is the body of Christ will have a lot of problems. I pray and look forward to times when successful people will come together and roll on the ground before the nations and say, we are doing this for you, Jesus. And like Paul, like, uh, like um, um, it, was, it was David, huh? who was returning back, the, the ark was being taken back and he was dancing in an undignified manner. And Saul's daughter looked at him and said, look what you are doing. You are bringing shame to yourself. Why are you doing this? He said, I'm dancing before the God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. God had her and she died barren. Hallelujah. When I hear and see the mighty things that God is doing in and through our lives, you know, sometimes I just stand before the mirror and I say, Lord, please show mercy. Show mercy that by your spirit, we never get to a point where the applauds of men. Now, people will clap. People will sincerely appreciate. There is a difference between simplicity and humility. You can be a simple person and still be proud. Are we together now? Yes. We are talking about a recognition where the nations will know that Jesus Christ is the one who has done this. But the spirit of pride also, let me tell you the character of pride. It downplays the contribution of others and desires for you to stand out. That is what, that is the problem. So when you look at Koinonia, all you see is Joshua Selman and you do not see the people who are making this happen. And if for any reason you want to, even if it's a little pat on the back, I create systems that prohibit them. Why are you clapping for the guy playing keyboard? Can he do Bible study like me? How many verses has he given you? So the center, sometimes we do it unconsciously, but it is a sin that the body must be purged from. If we're together, say amen. What is the cure for pride and vainglory? It's found in John chapter 3 from verse 22 to 30. John 3, 22 to 30. After these things, Jesus came to Judea and the Bible says he tarried and was about to be baptized. Let's read very quickly. The Bible says John was also baptizing. Watch this now. John was baptizing near Salim because there was much water there. And people came and were being baptized. Watch what happened now. For John was not yet cast into prison. You know, I used to think John stopped baptism after he announced Jesus. But I got to find out that he continued his thing. And there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. 26. And they came to John and said, Rabbi, he that was with you beyond the Jordan, whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same has started baptizing too. And all men are coming to him. That was a problem. And John answered and said, the answer of John must become our disposition. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. 28. It says, ye yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. 29. He that had the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiced greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, is therefore fulfilled. Verse 30, he must increase and I must decrease. Notice he never said I must vanish. No, I must decrease so that he will be seen. It is my prayer, first for myself as I'm preaching here, that when people look at me, 
they would not just see a celebrity or see whatever it is but they will see christ crucified and christ glorified through a privileged vessel that is the greatest testimony that i desire scene number five the fifth scene that the body of christ need to be purified of is called the sin of the tongue please write it down we're wrapping up the sin of the tongue this includes everything that can affect and destroy and corrupt the body that comes through the tongue lying gossip backbiting sowing seeds of discord they are all called the sins of the tongue are you seeing how god is helping us now so that as god is running the list at the end of this list if you stand and beat your chest and say i am fine your sin is this one are we together proverbs 34 12 to 13 proverbs 34 Pro, uh, psalms 34 sorry psalms 34 12 and 13 psalms 34 12 and 13 let's finish so, so we can pray it says what man is he that desired life and loved many days that he might see good what is that man what does he need to do keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile the word guile there is lies and deception proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 the six things that the lord hates six sixteen. these six things does the lord hate yea seven are an abomination unto him let's read the list to 19. a proud look number one a lying tongue number three hands that shed innocent blood number four a heart that devised wicked imaginations number five feet that be swift in running to mischief number nine number six now verse 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and then finally he that soweth discord among brethren the sin of the tongue can i tell you the truth there are many people today who have allowed the devil to use their tongues to divide the body of Christ, cause trouble the body of Christ. There are many believers from men of God to churches to several people. Who they, they are the way they are and the body has been corrupted this much because of the sin of the tongue. From gossiping to lying to devising wicked imaginations because the mouth is a testimony of the state of the heart are we together now the worst one here is he that soweth discord among brethren there are people today who cannot serve god acceptably because people creep into churches creep into families creep into prayer platforms and so seeds. Now I submit to you that there is no church globally that is immune from this. You will always have people who will sow seeds of discord. There are many homes today, Christian homes and marriages that are in disarray simply because there are people who sow seeds of discord. Ah, daddy, I need to tell you something. I saw mommy preparing your food and after she finished, she held something that was looking like Maggi. But it was the way she was sprinkling the thing. And the ma they brings the food to the man and the man says, no, no, I'm okay. What happened? Mm -mm, I'm okay. And then comes to the woman and says, I saw daddy, he was writing something, a check. And I think I saw him giving one woman or something. And the woman said, okay, me too. I'm going to my father's house. And the person who did it will keep quiet and stand somewhere. There are many people joining the heads of sincere people. And join this, they say this to this, they say this to that, and they stand back and watch with joy. No, it ought not to be so. It is a spirit. And it is not tell them. God is telling all of us. Are we together now? Yes. Seeds of discord. How about lying? There are people that lie like word of knowledge. You know, no rehearsal. You just lie from preachers to business people. Anything they are telling you, just know that you are hearing a lie. Even when they are crying, it's still a lie. 
I'm sure there are I'm sure there are judges who already know this. As soon as they enter, they just allow them to talk for formality. After that, they say, please, go to prison. We already know that you are, the thing is written from head to toe. Even as men of God, God needs to show us mercy. We are doing our best, but all these lies, exaggerations, lies. Years ago, in the seminary, they thought that there was something called white lie. You know, and all of those kinds of things. Lie is lie. Just need mercy. At the end of this teaching, all of us will need the blood of Jesus. That is the summary of it. At the end of this teaching, all of us are going to need the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. A lying tongue. Let me, what is the solution? I'll just give you two scriptures and then Psalms 19 and verse 4. Psalms 19 and verse 4. What is the solution to a lying tongue? Did I get that right? My goodness. I keep, I think my, give us Psalm 141 verse 3 and 4 psalm 141 3 and 4 it said set a watch O lord before my mouth and keep the door of my lips verse 4 incline not thy heart to any evil thing to practice wickedness with men that work iniquity and let me not eat of their dainties so he says set a guard over my mouth you see the beautiful thing is that you must not talk hear in your mind what you want to say first and find out is it edifying efficient chapter 4 i believe verse 29 ephesians 4 and 29 let no corrupt communication proceed from your mouth is that in your bible but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers that means if you are opening your mouth to speak and it is going to be gossip by biting tearing down people he's saying let no corrupt communication proceed from your mouth make sure that that which comes out is that which will edify it will minister grace to the hearers if you are with me say amen, amen. number six scene number six that the lord god of heaven demands that his bride the church be purified from the church global the church in africa and the church in nigeria is competition an unhealthy comparison competition an unhealthy comparison this is the sixth scene unhealthy comparison of men unhealthy comparison of structures competition an unhealthy comparison this has produced all kinds of unhealthy camps cabals do you know it is one of the plagues that has destroyed africa and even nigeria there are circles people have it has almost become like cult-like circles there are healthy circles that make for the preservation of convictions but there are people who have stretched it if you do not belong to certain cabals ministerial cabals it has almost become cult-like and sadly but respectfully this is even more pronounced in many parts of africa you see this happen so younger ministers who are clamoring for attention and visibility have to bend their standard because the requirement is until you weave yourself into certain cabals don't get me wrong i've told you community living is the key to preserving kingdom values and having having a good network of like-minded kingdom people with similar convictions is very biblical in fact if you don't have it then you will not have the grace to sus to be sustained and to stay you can't just because i teach about this it does not mean that you open up your heart to everything i love the body of christ but i have my convictions and my values there are groups, respectfully speaking, and associations that you would never see me part of. Not at that current template. You will not see me as part of them. Because I love the Lord and I hold true the convictions that I have for Him. Are we together? You will never, for instance, see me bring somebody here and I tell the person, your primary assignment to come here is to come and raise money. I'm not saying raising money is wrong. But for the purpose of deception prophesy manipulate the people raise the money and then we split it maybe 50 50 if he doesn't agree we do 64 you know, all those kind of things no it shouldn't be again i'm not being sarcastic i'm just being truthful because it happens and then competition competition is a dangerous spirit it should not be not in the body of christ are we together second 
Chronic, Second Corinthians 10 from verse 12. Second Corinthians 10 from verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves with themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. The Bible says are not wise. Next verse. The Bible says, but we will not boast of things without our measure or outside of our measure. You want to understand this, you have to look at it from Amplified. Give us Amplified. Amplified and then we'll read from there. It says, we on the other hand will not boast beyond our legitimate province and proper limit. But we will keep within the limits of our commission which God has allotted us by the measuring line which reaches and includes even you. Are we together now? Yes. 14. It says, for we are not overstepping the limits of our province and stretching beyond our ability to reach as though we reached not and had no legitimate mission to you. For we were the very first to come to you, even as far to you with the good news of the gospel of Christ. Reading to 18. Next verse, please. We do not boast, therefore, beyond our proper limit over other men's labor, but we have the hope and confident expectation that as your faith continues to grow, our field among you will be greatly enlarged, still within the limits of our commission. Just read the remaining down to 18. He's trying to say that, listen, we are not here in competition. God has given us jurisdiction and we respect it. And if for any reason we boast, we do it within our predefined jurisdiction. Are we together? It is an attitude that we must carry as men of God, as business people, within the body of Christ. Competition and unhealthy comparison, it must be avoided. We must run away from it. We must never allow ourselves to be victims of it. I have taught you here in Koinonia that more than Koinonia, our assignment is the body of Christ. I have taught you that. Are we together? If I stop you and I rob you from enjoying the diversity of the body simply because of me, I would have cheated you because it is not everything you need that God gave me. As much as I love you, there are things that are needed in your life that is not within the scope of my grace or assignment. That is where other members of the body come. Are we together now they can supply to you dimensions that i may not be able to supply or to the degree they supply recognizing that gives you a sense of appreciation for what god is doing across the body believing that koinonia is the only ministry making impact believing that joshua selman is the only man of god making his deception i've told you that most of these things come from our backgrounds we come from africa a background of deprivation so when God begins to use us, the backlog of some of these things, the appetite to outshine. You know, I travel a lot and when I travel across regions, sometimes they are very excited that I'm coming. There are nations that I'm coming to now and you can't imagine the excitement that is happening. But I am very quick to let the men of God, the leaders, the captains of industry know there that it's not a celebrity that is coming. It is an ambassador. And I am coming as a contributor to what God is already doing. I'm not coming to outshine and downplay and rubbish other men of God, rubbish other ministries and make it look like nobody is doing anything serious except me. I will be in deception because God is an indictment on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. To believe you are the only one who is effective the moment you think it is, if I ever believe that Koinonia is the only ministry making impact, Joshua Selman is the, I'm insulting the ministry of the Holy Spirit because I'm saying he's so ineffective, he cannot guarantee the stability of other structures. Politicians never believe you are the only one. Let's not make the mistake of Elijah. Elijah said, and I, I am the only one. Who is standing? It was a mistake. Oh, there are men who... Oh. Do you know, in my life as a man of God, I have met some people, some of them young people, and I have conversed with them. And the kind of presence and power... They are, they've not even started ministry as we know. 
some of them do not even know how anointed they are is you by the privilege of growth who can taste it and you can say that ah there is grace here there are greater men that are coming who will do greater things than the joshua selmans we better respect them in advance because by the time you tear down people and they rise no we are surrounded by many we are not the only ones who walk this river they gave us the baton and god is still training many there are many young people in villages God is training. There are many young people around God. There are many women of fire and power. There are intercessors. There are end time prophets. There are apostles. Some of you are looking at me. I know you are sitting quietly, but there is what God is doing. As men of God, we must be honest to appreciate and recognize. And drop away this celebrity mindset. no god is bigger than just one man god is bigger than just one ministry no matter how effective you are you cannot capture the entirety of what god is doing listen very carefully and learn i'm not ashamed to appreciate what god is doing across every church with men of god with people when i have the opportunity of meeting pastors whether they feel we are greater we may not be at the same level in grace but it does not matter from the least to the greatest we are all an army who are who are advancing the purposes of the kingdom from the least contributor to the greater we are all deserving of honor the spirit that rubbishes the contributions of others and makes it look like only few people a man of god met me one time and we we're talking and he said kai there are only few of me now joshua selman that god is using in nigeria i told him keep quiet and don't allow that blasphemy come out of your mouth there are people in regions and villages we don't even have the kind of anointing to fight those demons there there are women who did not go to school but they are in the spirit of anna the prophetess fighting battles that we do not know no protocol protecting them how dare you believe joshua selman is the only one how dare you believe only koinonia what about other men of god what about other apostles what about other churches everybody is making an active contribution if i travel to lagos or to abuja or to any nation the reason why you find believers there is because there was a man of god there mentoring and building them before we arrive we must cultivate a healthy respect competition and unhealthy comparison and let me charge you my precious people don't go around joining the heads of men of god don't go around joining the heads of people by trying to compare oh this one is this this one is that no no that is not your assignment hallelujah i once met a woman with a unique grace for barrenness she may not be able to prophesy but if she lays her hands on you i had the privilege of praying over one of the the biggest prayer mountains that i know in this nation is led off by a woman very humble woman the first time that woman came to me she came for prayers when she began to tell me and i saw what god did in her life i felt it was me that needed to kneel down let her pray for me she's she's dedicated it now it's a mighty revival center you go there and see prayer cells like it was in the days of young Gicho. we have not come near these things where then is our pride there are people changing the world just because they are not on social media just because they are not invited to the places we may look like the celebrities but make no mistake god has a robust army and there are still many rising
please look up let me remind you again some of you here are leaders of small prayer groups you are starting don't be discouraged don't allow us men of god discourage you you will make mistakes it is better to make mistake in our presence let's see and correct you in our lifetime than to rubbish what was done but do not be discouraged you will make mistakes let god help you and we will help you by the grace of god are we together sometimes i see different groups ministry groups they come together and they just want to come and greet me for prayer and you look at them they may not be dressing well but they are zealous people they may not know much but their hearts are there how dare you push them how were we when god started with us you think we were like this no nobody can ever be perfect enough for god's use you are built while you are going there is a threshold level of training but when you get there he begins to use you while the transformation continues let's give younger people a chance to grow and make mistakes and learn and grow and build our job is to guide not stop are we together there are many dreams and visions that have been buried because of this competition joshua selman if you must grow spiritually it must be through me that is absolute nonsense christ is the head of the church if i die today god forbid you will try to raise me back to life if i don't wake up what will you do you will dig the ground and throw me there but the program of god continues listen to me the program of god was there before i was born some of us are still children compared to what god did before pastor you can be as mighty as you want to be prophetess man of god woman of god no matter how young or old i'm bringing you a word don't despise what god is doing respect joshua selman and every other man of god respect the fathers of faith but please not to the detriment of what god is doing in your life do not over honor us to the point where it looks like god has stopped raising men no I know we enjoy it because it seems to massage our ego but i'm telling you the truth something is wrong number seven the fourth scene the seventh scene that the body of christ needs to be pushed off is the scene of imbalance this is the last one and we pray the seventh scene it is not only an error it is sin what is imbalance failure to embrace and communicate the whole counsel of god acts chapter 20 please give us verse 27 and 28 acts chapter 20 from verse 27 to 28 for i have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of god is that in your bible Paul is saying, I stand by God. I did not, I did not trivialize any dimension. He says, take heed therefore unto yourselves. He's charging them now. And to the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. To feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Please look up. Imbalance is where there is an exaggeration and the stretching of a dimension of kingdom truth beyond its jurisdiction of relevance you want to understand imbalance you have to study cooking in making a meal it's not the same quantity of rice that you will have for salt is that true for a plate of rice you may need a pinch or two pinches of salt and that is enough by the time you have one mudu of rice and one mudu of salt and join them together what have you done the ingredients are there but not to that degree or by the time you cook a nice delicious rice and then you ignore salt imbalance it is the reason why believers in our world today have not been able to rise to that stature remember the bible says we are kings and priests i submit to you that the church in africa has emphasized on the priesthood dimension we have done well in terms of prayer consecration like i'm doing so 
the average believer in Nigeria and Africa is not naive as to their spiritual development. That priesthood part, we have gotten it well. But the kingly part, there is a lot of ignorance among believers. That is the reason why we cannot dominate the mountains and bring glory to the Lord. That is why believers can be praying in tongues while politically and sociologically we become victims of situations and circumstances. This was the problem between Cain and Abel. If you study the Bible, Abel understood priesthood, but Cain built a city and named it after his son. Are we together now? Notice that every time in the Bible you see the building of cities, it was the spirit of the Antichrist. Most believers stopped at just understanding priesthood. Jesus, when he came, he began to teach and say, listen, I am sending you as sheep among wolves. The average believer is ignorant as how to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom come project. We have no idea. Ask the average believer, what do we do as far as establishing the program of God? The only thing they will tell you is let's pray, let's study the scripture, let's live a holy life. And that is wonderful, that is priesthood. But the Bible says we have been made unto our God, kings and priests. If you are a priest alone, you will do well behind the veil. But if you come into the cosmos, you will not be able to thrive. The whole counsel of God. There is holiness and consecration like you are receiving tonight. There is the revelation of God's word. There is the prayer ministry. There is a place for system building and leadership. There is a place for intelligence, knowing how to occupy the secular space. I don't have time. I would have shown you from scripture how Israel became a great nation. Israel did not become a great nation just by priesthood alone. Uh -uh. Are we together? They were in Egypt. They did not abort their priesthood, but they did not understand the kingly dimension, and so they remained slaves. So we have many believers who are sincere, but they cannot pay the school fees of their children. We have many believers who are sincere, but they cannot access finances to build the building. No. The whole counsel of God the lack of it is what has created the lopsidedness in the church of God. So I can stand right now as a man of God. And because I'm preaching, you are coming to bless me. The name of what I'm doing is value. Even if it is spiritual, it is still the law of value. And because I am dispensing value, whether I am selling it or giving it free, the law demands that there will be a reward. So you come and honor me. But what of you? If I do not empower you, how will I ask you to give? It is fraudulent to not empower you and equip you with the truths of the gospel and then keep demanding from you. I will never be a man of God that will exaggerate a dimension of kingdom growth at the expense of others. Let me show you something. We are wrapping up. Are you learning? One scripture and then we begin to pray. Goodness. Goodness. Acts chapter 18 from verse 24 to 26. The Bible talked about a certain Jew named Apollos. The Bible says he was born at Alexandria. An eloquent man. Notice this man's credentials. An eloquent man, mighty in scriptures. He came to Ephesus, verse 25. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. So he was not a rebel. He was mentored, being fervent in spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But his only problem was he knew only. How many of us preach very well, but we know only? How many of us do business very well, but we know only? Respectfully speaking, there are some of us men of God. We are fervent like this, but we know only administration. We know only financial principles. And stopping there is imbalance. There are some of us who know only priesthood. Principles of prayer, fasting, consecration, and the word of God. Some of us only, we understand spiritual growth and the rest. Some of us only, we know government. When everybody brings their only and we embrace it, it will now bring completion. 
are we together now if i begin to teach you only business only financial principles and your spiritual life is going down while you are prospering that is imbalance you may be rich but you will go to hell it will destroy you can i tell you this we must stop criticizing dimensions that we do not understand or are not captured within the frame of our training my job as a man of god is to be efficient as far as the dimension of the kingdom committed to me is concerned but to have a healthy appreciation knowing that i know only no matter how much i know i know only that limitation was brought about by god himself so that we will embrace the entirety of the body so when i teach about the body of christ i teach about the fact that god has invested diversities of graces it is not everything that i know and have today and that you are receiving that came from the core of my call there are many dimensions that were not captured in my training i have to outsource them through honor to other vessels within the body are we together let's wrap up revelation chapter 21 we'll read verse 9 to 11 and then 16 and then we'll tie up tonight's teaching goodness there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plague watch this now and talked with me saying come up hither and i will show you the bride the lamb's wife he's about to show us the lamb's wife now verse 10 and he carried me away into the spirit and showed me a great and high mountain and showed me a great city so the lamb's wife is that city the holy jerusalem descending out of heaven from god verse 11 having the glory of god and her light was like unto the stone most precious even like a jasper stone clear and crystal verse 16 look at the lamb's wife the lamb's wife that city had it lied four square and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with a reed twelve thousand furlongs and the bible says the length and the breadth and the height are what that balanced city is the lamb's wife no dimension was exaggerated before another the length is the same as the height the length is the same as the breath when that bride becomes a balanced bride embracing all that dimension indeed she's now the lamb's wife the conclusion at the end of this teaching tonight there will be two groups classically one group but for the discussion two groups number one those who may have been victims of many or all these things that have been mentioned and for you i have a word first john 2 1 and 2 first john 2 1 and 2 this is a word of encouragement as we conclude my little children these things i write unto you that ye sin not for if any man sin he gives you a word of hope that we have an advocate with the father even jesus the righteous verse 2 it says for he is the propitiation for our sins and not for us only but the sins of the whole world isaiah 55 from verse 6 to 7 this is the word of hope for the first group that might be here 55 6 and 7 isaiah seek ye the lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts he says let him return unto the lord and he will have mercy upon him and our god and to our god for he will abundantly pardon so tonight is not for you to be discouraged tonight is for you to know that the mercy of god is still available god is exposing this so that his bride will be and remain purified for the second group there may be people who by the mercies of God are standing standing in many and most of this for you I have a word of encouragement as we wrap up first Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 11 
and 12. First Corinthians 10, 11 and 12. It says, now all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the end of the world has come. Verse 12. It says, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he falls. For those who have who God has helped, it is not for you to be judgmental and to point hands at people. It is to take heed while you stand, lest you fall. The final scripture, 2 Corinthians 1 from verse 3 and 4. We're about to pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Verse 4. He said, who comforted us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. The reason why God comforted you is so that you can have the strength, the stamina, the experience to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Tonight, God has commended us as the body of Christ. But his refining fire has come to us, teaching us seven deadly sins that we must obtain grace. This is true for me. This is true for you. This is true for all of us. The intention is that we become a bride purified, a church purified. I believe in the prophetic destiny of the church in Nigeria. I believe in the prophetic destiny of the church in Africa. In spite of all of the decadence and all the things that may be happening, a mix of strength and weaknesses, a mix of crowns and pains, I have one word for you. Christ is still the head of his church. And I want to tell you at the end of it, it is victory. At the end of it, it is grace. Rise upon your feet as we pray. Only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom now there'll be no end. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Now listen. I know that our time is gone but i'm going to give everyone two minutes no prayer point is between you and the god of your salvation i read the list for you you know where it affects you forget about the body of christ and focus on yourself forget about them and think about me in one minute can you lift your voice and cry